My name is Santiago Sejo. I am, uh, I am from Mexico and I am uh, a former Biodesign Fellow from 2007. I am currently the uh, CEO of Salud Cercana in Mexico. Who, it's a, a healthcare delivery system, uh, integrated delivery system for middle and low income patients. My experience between the two healthcare systems, uh, uh, the US and the Mexico uh, healthcare system, um, I would frame it initially on a very conceptual level, which is, uh, is healthcare a right or not? Uh, a human right. Uh, in Mexico, it's embedded in the constitution, uh, healthcare as a, as, a, as a human right. And that uh, frames how the system works in terms of being uh, highly uh, geared towards the public sector uh, and the government being a, a provider of healthcare financing for healthcare and, and healthcare delivery provision. So what are the implications for an average patient of having universal healthcare coverage in, in the way that it works in Mexico? Um, I would say that on the pro side uh, is that patients feel entitled to receive care. They, they do know that regardless of their socioeconomic status, regardless of the geography that they are, uh, they, 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 the system will take care of them and they are part of that system. Another pro is that, at least in the universal healthcare system that we have, you have explicit benefits. So you have, what are the things that will be covered? What are the things that won't be covered uh, in the specific places, but could be covered elsewhere? And then what you have are complementary uh, insurance for those that are interested in covering uh, things that the traditional system don't cover. Um, those things that are covered, uh, 95 or 98 percent of those things are the most common things that patients will uh, search care for. So that's what you define universal coverage. The friction here comes when you are trying to cover everything for everyone. And as the world works in limited amount of resources, you need to make trade-offs, right? So the cons are the, the disparity of care, the disparity of access, um, and on a system where the rule of law uh, is lacking, then you have corruption. So you'll see mismanagement of many of the resources that are entitled for a specific type of procedures uh, being used by those that have specific, uh, connections or access. So, so it, a, consist, a pro is that you increase the demand, but a con is that the demand itself is not um, distributed equally. And then uh, lastly has to do with the quality of care. On a constrained system with a lot of demand, then you have the issue of doctors being overwhelmed, saturated appointments or surgeries being delayed uh, for months. Uh, and it's sometimes as a, as, a, as a physician, it's frustrating to tell a patient that they have cancer, and, but they will be receiving care in six months. On the universal healthcare, uh, the one that we have in Mexico, um, the implications are that uh, resources are constrained. So you have a single payer, and that payer will uh, establish how much would it pay for any uh, disease, right, uh, of treatment. So sometimes the payment system won't change, regardless of what system you, do you use. So you have that constraint, and it imposes different type of risks for the innovation process that are uh, first you need to pass through the boundaries of okay i'm not going to get any more money from what i'm trying to do and then the resources are already uh, earmarked so how can i bring up innovations over there that doesn't mean that there's not possibilities to create or to foster innovation the environment is just different and you need to account for that environment within that context